Good morning, y'all. It is bright and early the next morning. We just left y'all last night. Just arriving at Devil's Lake in lower Wisconsin. I think we got everything set up and finally got in bed after showering probably about, what'd you say, midnight? It was probably midnight. But this is our first stop on our way. Actually, our only stop on our way out east as we're trying to get towards the east states that we've never been to before. And we're really excited about that. And as Kelly said in the prior vlog, there's no national forest BLM land or public land in between South Dakota where we left and the route that we're taking when we go through lower Minnesota, lower Wisconsin, through uh, upper Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. There's no public land for us to camp on. So we're probably gonna have to be doing some state parks and this was one that Kelly found that she really wanted to go to. It's real beautiful. Well, we haven't left the campground yet, but for what I know, there's a couple of hikes. There's, well, there's one big hike that you can do here that we want to do tomorrow. The lake is really pretty. I don't know if it's going to be warm enough to swim because the highs are only in the 70s right now. But we definitely want to go check it out. A lot of people take their kayaks out, paddle boards. I just picked it because, like I said on the last couple of vlogs, slowly, solely on Google Maps, pictures and reviews. And that's what I meant when I said that it's beautiful. The pictures that Kelly has shown of the lake, gorgeous. But it's weird when you get to camp at night when you don't know what it looks like. We got in here last night and my brain was completely turned around. I so thought that this was south and that that was north until later on this morning when the sun rose there in the east. So now I know that that's north. Well, what was shocking to me is when we first, I don't know what part of Wisconsin it was, but it all of a sudden started looking like Arkansas with the trees and we passed over the Mississippi River Valley and it really just started looking like Arkansas and smelled like it too. It kind of kind of feels like home a little bit except it's not hot in here. It got down to the 50s last night. Today high is only in the 70s. Tomorrow high is 81, still low 50s. So it's looking good on temperatures. Oh, and what I'm supposed to do that I want to start doing is telling y'all our elevation. We're at 1,028 feet. Oh. That's the lowest elevation we've been in in months. I thought it was going to be like, because we were lower in Michigan. What were you like, 300? Uh, I don't remember. And whenever we were driving last night, it was really dark. And when we crossed over the Mississippi, it looked like the Ozarks. It looked like the bluffs. I had never would have pictured some of the headwaters or the upper parts of the Mississippi looking like the Ozark plateaus. It had the rolling hills with the tree coverage. It looked like the Ozarks. It was, it blew my mind. And it's the dividing state line of Minnesota and Wisconsin. And forever, I never even knew that Minnesota, lower Minnesota and Wisconsin were divided by the Mississippi River. But Kelly is cooking one of my favorite dishes because the other day she says, what do you want for breakfast? I said, pizza, breakfast pizza. Well, I did go ahead and cook your egg just a little bit so it doesn't take as long to cook in here because we can only cook one pizza at a time because the oven's so small. And it takes, he likes, I usually crack his egg on the pizza because he likes it really runny but it takes so long. Like his cheese will almost be burnt. That's how long it takes to cook the egg. So I went ahead and cooked it just a little bit and then put it on there. Mine, I'll do the same. I don't really like my yolk runny, so, so I won't cook sweet. it. I actually like break my yolk up as I'm frying it. Still kind of try to keep it in the middle, but that way when I flip it, the whole yolk cooks. One of my favorites, I'd have to say, I like my egg like that more. Really? I do. Yeah. She's taking care of me all the time, y'all. Now that we've finished breakfast, cleaned up dishes, I did yoga, put everything away, we are going to go down to the visitor center and register our vehicle, let them know we're here, check in, and maybe get a couple of maps and see what there is to do around here. We know for sure tomorrow, which will be the next vlog, we are doing a hike. Um, today we did decide just to take it pretty easy and just kind of drive around, see the sites. We're gonna go see the lake, see what it looks like in person and see what this state park has to offer. Y'all, I am really lost. <laughs> well, we're just kind of looping around the campground. I was like, I guess we'll look at everything. Oh, that's the bathhouse. You know, normally I don't feel this this turned around, but I feel really turned around right now. I don't even know how I found camp last night. No, neither, because it was pitch dark. Thankfully, it was pitch dark in this campground. It would see Ooh, these spots would have been nice like that. These are real nice. Oh, we drove through here yeah, last right. night. And I was like, wow, these would be oh, great. Oh, man, I am. But I don't think these have electric. They don't have an E on it, so that means they don't have electric. Look at that big open spot. This looks like some camping in Arkansas. 
Oh, and then right there is where we filled up our tank last night. So you're going back this way? Yeah, it says exit right there. I know, I just... They got a dump station. Fresh water, potable water. Red is, you know, cleaning out your stuff. Exit is, is this way. I hope I can get back here later. Thank you for visiting Devil's Lake State Park. I think we're leaving. Okay, okay. So we're leaving Devil's Lake State Park. All right, entering back into the park. <laughs> Let's see, uh, let's see what it takes to check in, even though we're already here. Wink, wink. What we found out is that the pass is either $16 a day or $38 for the year, but it's just the calendar year. So since we just bought this, it will only last us until December. But the good thing is, is if you purchase one in December, that starts for the following year. So you can get 13 months out of the December one. So the sticker looks like this. It's just like our Michigan sticker that we have over there for the state park systems. And he says it's super sticky and you put it in your bottom left corner. We're official. Since we're right here by the lake, we're gonna go check it out real quick. And then there's another campground associated with the park. It's called Ice Age Campground. And I'm gonna go look at it because they're, all the sites seem to be pretty primitive. And you know, we like that. So we're gonna go check that out uh, after we look at the lake. And I did see on the map, there's an ice cream place here. <laughs> now, I don't know if I'll be getting ice cream today. I'm pretty full right now from breakfast. I'll get so ice we'll cream today. Maybe later. I'll get it right now. Look at that dog, he's happy. He had his ice cream cone. Yeah. We had a pup, pup cup. So here's the lake. Oh, that's pretty. Can't go without getting ice cream on every single vlog now, I think. Almost can't go a day. <laughs> well, I can't buy it anymore because we don't have a freezer. So. When I, I can get it when I can. And usually it means anytime that we see it, we get it just mm -hmm. in case we go. Cause last year we went like two months without ice cream. That's, that's rough on us. But it looks like this state park was established in 1911. And I think it was from glacier, from giant glaciers that carved this out. I'll do some more research here in a little bit. Well, and you can rent kayaks, paddle boards it looks like. Ice cream is good, lake is pretty. It's really peaceful here too. Um, but I, we do wanna check out other campground. It's called Ice Age Campground, the one I was telling you about that's more primitive. So we're gonna drive over there. It's across the highway and check it out. So we're driving around and if you know we're from the south, we've never seen an apple tree. And this- okay. Yeah. And it's just dropping right here. That apple tree. <laughs> so this is uh, the Ice Age Loop campground that we're checking out right now. And it's first come, first serve. And I'm gonna and get you an apple, babe. There's no electricity hookups or water here. First come, first serve. But, I mean, you're gonna be by yourself. It's pretty private. There's nobody else here. There's two loops. There's upper and a lower. We're doing the lower right now. <laughs> pretty cool. I know, it's so sad. We've never seen real apple trees. We just ran over an apple. He's determined to get me an apple. It's okay. <laughs> These are some really nice camp spots. Yeah, you definitely have a lot of privacy. There's a bunch of trees in between you and your neighbor. And some of them have like, go forever before you even have a neighbor. This one right here is the one I was talking about. Yeah, it's real nice. That's why it's so hard to book things because if I would've known there was a first come first serve, well, we needed electricity to charge things. I guess we didn't really need it. No, there's plenty of sun here. We could add solar panels. Yeah. Uh. I'm gonna get out and show you a nice, a really nice one. This is huge. Look at this. I mean, you can kind of see your neighbor there, but there's nobody out here. Like, this is so nice. This is like Arkansas camping. <laughs> this is like backwoods, Washita's. This is what the camping spots that we almost find all the time in Arkansas yeah. look like. 
Primitive camping yeah, without, slides, not in a campground. This and that. Yeah. But this is awesome. Wow. Ah, I wish we would. You want to move camp? Oh, no. <laughs> Too much work. We're going to finish this loop and then we're going to figure out what we're going to do after that. Some of us are being lazy today. I just need to sleep. I need a nap. Yesterday <laughs> killed me. I guess he's going to take a nap. I'm going to do a workout. I guess I'm going to weight train. It's arms, back, chest day for me. working out I told Cody when we were driving I was like I think there is a apple tree at a camp there is right across the way right over there did you see that yeah. you, go, you think you can reach the apples on that one it's kind of low oh yeah in the south all we have is peaches plums figs pears I don't see many apple trees oh and we have pecan trees in Arkansas area in eastern Texas and Louisiana look at that Just tons and tons of little apples. Kelly wants me to get her one. All right, honey. That's actually really, really good. To me, sometimes apples from the store are just kind of bland. You know, they put wax on the ones at the store. I don't think I've ever in my life had an apple that doesn't have wax mm -hmm. on it. I used to try to scrub it off when I had a vegetable brush. Ma'am. It's really good. That's really good. Another bite. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Ma'am. Cody's finally working out. Hey man, all I needed was a nap. I feel good. <laughs> but I forgot there was something else in this area I wanted to see. It's called Prut. Poo I thought it was Prut. Pewits, Pewits nest. It is a waterfall, 30 to 40 foot deep gorge formed during the retreat of the last glacier associated with it are Skillet Creek, Shaded Cliffs, and a Northern Dry Mesic Pine Forest. And what's pretty neat is a lot of the area here, actually the whole region here is the furthest south that the glacier, ancient glaciers were located. And that is how Devil's Lake and all the features around here were made. So as soon as he gets done, we're gonna put all this up and we're gonna head over there. Well, that was only a 10 minute drive from camp and we're gonna go up here and read the sign. Are you gonna look it up? I'm just gonna try to look it up on oh, hiking okay. projects. It doesn't look like the hike is maybe about like 0.3 miles or something. It's not, it's not even, even on it's there. Not even on I don't here. think it's very far because we just passed the bluff before we turned in here. So let's go see. I'm really not thinking this is that far of a walk. Cody's got his backpack. Well, hey, better be prepared. Back at camp and Angel Princess, what are you cooking tonight? I'm gonna make minestrone soup and Gruyere grilled cheese. I chopped up some stuff. I got half the vegetables chopped up. I'm running out of room, so I've gotta start sauteing something. And what she has so far is onion, zucchini, garlic, and <laughs> carrots. So I need to start sauteing some stuff because I'm running out of room to put things. So I'm adding in my other veggie, which is the zucchini and some parsley. We have some thyme. And some basil. Got some diced tomatoes. I'm gonna add probably half the can also with the juice.
So I'm putting in some broth. I like my vegetable broth. Of course, this is the only brand I like to use if I can find it. I'm gonna leave it out because I might do more. I'm not sure. Throw this around and break it up. This is tomato sauce, but I would like to use tomato puree, but they did not have a small can of the puree. So here we are with the sauce. Stir that. I'm also gonna add some water. And I feel like I'm gonna do a little more broth. Stir that around. Oh, and a bay leaf. Let me go get that. So one bay leaf. All right, I need to get this boiling. So I'll let this simmer for 15 minutes. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn the heat down just while I add the rest of the ingredient. I have some Italian green beans. I'm gonna add those in. All right, I'm gonna add some spinach. And we have some small shell pasta. Turn the heat back up to a boil. Once that starts boiling, I'm gonna time it for 15 minutes again to get the noodles to cook. If it starts soaking up too much liquid, I'm probably gonna add more broth if I need to. I'm gonna let that boil and we'll see what happens. The soup is done. So we both like our soup uh, more hearty than runny with the broth. So that's why I chose not to add any extra broth. Now, if you like it more soupy, then I would add more broth to it. Then we'll put a little Parmesan. It's very hot, so we're trying to let it cool off. But it is so good still, even though it's burning my tongue. Yeah, I do not want to burn my tongue because I want to taste it. <laughs> well, anyways, we'll catch you on the other. See ya.